Good morning, folks. The Van Allen radiation belts surround planet Earth. Similar forms likely surround many spinning celestial bodies. In late summer 2012, two Van Allen probes were sent up to monitor them and revealed a never-before-seen third belt, but it lasted for only about a month. This is the first of many data packages we hope to get back on what's right outside our doorstep. Speaking of sending up, they are hoping to say Dragon is captured again here soon. They're launching today. Well, folks, most of you know that the Umbral Field finally opened the coronal hole to Earth's direction yesterday, and the Quake Watch got kicking just over two days after it began. Vanuatu made yesterday's broadcast, but just a short time later, a major earthquake struck the Kuril Islands. Above average quakes followed in Nevada and Idaho. Watches continue. The non nuclear event in France, it was construction related, not nuclear. In Wisconsin, an annual mass fish death may be getting out of control. It's the largest in 15 years already and not expected to stop soon. No explanation given for the increase. Got two other things linked below. Best February weather images and an update on the major drought in the U.S., still over half the country. Looking at the radar, these waves of rain are taunting drought-stricken northern New Zealand. Hopefully they make it over there today. Major rain in northern Australia should be obviously visible and likely welcome. Australia just set a number of all-time summer heat records. Meanwhile, the Met Office claims Euro winter is going the opposite way. Part of the reason is massive low pressure troughs yanking way, way harder than they did in the past, driving freezing Arctic air over the continent in only hours' time. The Americas are still watching this giant low, same counterclockwise motion that's got Europe freezing, and this is bringing freezing temperatures to every Gulf state except Florida. As you watch the clouds, you should see how the moisture follows the convergence, but you still see the helical motion. Keeping that in mind, in the Pacific where these counterclockwise lows still aren't moving and the clockwise high south of them still driving tropical air north to meet the Arctic blast brought down by the lows. You cannot find a place on Earth where air of this great a difference in latitude are so forcefully converged. This will continue as long as the pressure dictates. I bet folks living on the coast here from Oregon up north of Vancouver are about sick of this rain. As previously stated, the umbral field left Earth open to these coronal holes. Little pop back at the end, but nearly directly sideways from Earth. You can see some green on the south that is a coronal hole that we pointed out yesterday. It's turning in towards Earth for the early March planetary conjunctions. Only solar movement to see in the last 24 hours is a non-eruptive surface energetic event on the eastern limb. Looking at the sunspots, definitely developed, complex, and with a shadow trying to sneak in behind them. Flare potential is rising, and we do need those moderate ones. But the space weather story is a coronal hole impact stream. While their field openings are important for quake watches, coronal holes also put out strong solar wind streams that act like longer, drawn-out coronal mass ejections. We are seeing solar wind speed ramping from 300 to 500 kilometers per second. This faster wind bunched up slower particles ahead of it like a shovel or a broom and caused a very dense spike out ahead of the faster stream. Fluxgate is off the default charts, gotta expand to see the magnetic disturbance. Plasma already penetrating in a significant way at the red spike, and some very severe inductions have begun at the baseline, but up through all ELF frequencies. KP has hit 4 and we're just getting started. Watches continue. Aurora alerts are a go worldwide. Geomagnetic instability is rising. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.